You're watching The Daily Decrypt. Welcome to Currency Competition, friend. I'm your host, Amanda, and today's episode is brought to you by Node40. Hello. Hi, Keith. Well, well, how have you been? Very, very good. I've not seen a patient yet that wants to pay with Bitcoin, though, since you guys. Really? Okay. Well, maybe we this... Of, we got a lot of press, but... I've not had anybody offer me Bitcoin since you all were here. All right. Well, maybe this interview can change that because I'm not sure how many people are are aware of it. And but even if they even if they are, uh, I still wanted to talk to you because even though the theme of the Daily Decrypt is currency competition. Uh, right. I believe that your operation is unique in that it believes in medical competition. Go figure, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I just really think that these things are interrelated. So if you, if you will allow me, I would like to start uh, by telling everybody how I came into contact with you, Keith. Absolutely. <laughs> so about two years ago, um, my man friend, my man servant, as you've also heard me call him several times, uh, required surgery and we were staying up in New Hampshire. And so we called all, all around these various clinics and hospitals or whatever, telling them what kind of surgery uh, we needed. It was a bicep repair and asking for a price quote. And not only did we not get a price quote, but we got mostly silences and even we were laughed at once. We were laughed at by a, a hospital receptionist for asking for a price for a service. And so we started feeling kind of like down and hopeless about this. And so we contacted the surgery center of Oklahoma on a whim, on a weekend actually, it was a Sunday afternoon and we sent them an email and we thought, okay, you know, we'll, we'll throw this out there. Two hours later, Keith Smith himself, an anesthesiologist at the Surgery Center of Oklahoma. Am I correct? You're an anesthesiologist, correct, Keith? That's right. Yes. You yourself responded to us via email on a weekend within two hours with an exact dollar price quote for us. And so already we were thinking, okay, this is a, this is a horse of a different color, isn't it? And then we decided to really push the envelope and we emailed him back and said, you wouldn't by chance accept payment in Bitcoin and gold, would you? And what did you say, Keith? I'll tell you what you said in case you don't remember. You I, responded back, we will accept whatever form of payment is most convenient for you. That's still true. <laughs> yeah. So with that lead in, tell us about your operation, Keith. Well, uh, we've been open uh, in Oklahoma City now for uh, 19 years in May. It doesn't seem possible. Um, 19 years? You're shitting me. 19 years. We we opened in May of 1997 and from the very beginning decided that we would be very open and transparent with our pricing and that we would never accept a dime of money from the government. And that has that has not changed. Um, seven years ago in April, uh, we put our prices online uh, with the idea that we could generate some price competition and that we might actually start a price war. We also wanted to make ourselves more known to the people who actually had the sticker shock of paying their own medical bills. Um, and we also knew something, and everybody knows, there's something terribly, terribly wrong uh, with healthcare in the United States. It operates uh, very much like a, a cartel. And we didn't understand all of the nuances, and I don't pretend to understand all of the nuances now, but we know a lot more about what's wrong and how the people behind the curtain line their pockets, uh, hidden from view, uh, the people who make a lot of money in the healthcare industry who do not render really any care whatsoever to patients. So our putting prices online has accomplished all three of these goals. We, we are now much more of a, of a known quantity uh, in the United States and even in Canada. 
Mm -hmm. People come see us from all 50 states except Hawaii and foreign countries because they find our pricing. And we've also uncovered and helped discover some of the, the scams that are operational in the United States healthcare system. And we've also got people that are printing out our price list and demanding that their local hospital step up and match our pricing or they're going to fly to Oklahoma City or drive to Oklahoma City just like you guys did. Right. And and so it's become a bit of a deflationary force as well. And all three of those were really dreams, things that we hoped for, and they've all they've all been achieved. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm interested in hearing more about all of those things, in particular, uh, who it is, the, the actors you have uncovered, who are making most of the money in the industry that people call healthcare. Yeah. Uh, but not providing any of the value. And I, I, I'm not sure if this relates to it or not, but I neglected to mention to you that before we decided to come to the Surgery Center of Oklahoma for surgery, not only were there like the laughing and the, the silent moments on the phone when we asked for prices, but we actually did go in and we, even without a price, we thought, you know, let's go see a doctor and see what he says if he thinks we should get surgery and how you know maybe we can start to get a feel of what we would be looking at if we go pay to get an MRI and talk to a doctor and so we did and this surgeon uh, after examining my partner he comes in and basically tells us I'm not interested in doing surgery on you all and like the the lack of prices was so shocking to me at that point when I realized that there was no price, there was no amount of money I could offer him that, I mean, short of maybe like, I guess $100,000 cash right then and there in the office as a big like secret or something. But there, there he didn't even want our money, Keith. Like, why didn't he want our money? Tell us, tell us about what's going on in what people call healthcare. Well, the best, the best way I think to understand the scam of the United States healthcare system is to start out um, envisioning that you're in the hospital and you've been charged a hundred dollars for an aspirin. An aspirin. Yeah. So uh, the hundred dollar aspirin is the kind of the story that I tell that I think helps explain a lot of what's going on. The hospital, um, charges $100 for the aspirin, knowing that they're only going to be paid by the average insurance company $5 for that aspirin, and perfectly happy with that for several reasons. One is they probably paid less than a penny for that aspirin. Two, after they collect $5, they'll claim that they lost the $95 that they did not collect, and so that creates red ink, which helps maintain the fiction of their not-for-profit status. The third reason they are fine with collecting $5 on a $100 aspirin charge is that that $95 they claim that they've lost goes into a bucket called uncompensated care. This bucket is then shipped off to Washington, D.C., and then they receive a kickback or a rebate from the taxpayers to the extent that they claim these losses. So it, I call it a reverse Enron, where Enron overstated their gains uh, to their advantage. The hospitals are actually incentivized to overstate their losses, um, and, and they make more money doing so. That's why, on the one hand, the hospitals complain that all the uninsured in their emergency rooms are bankrupting them, but every time you drive by one, there's a building crane out in front making it larger. So those two things are not consistent. They don't co compute, and that's why. If you're in the insurance company shoes, this one is more counterintuitive. The insurance company is happy to receive a $100 bill from a hospital for an aspirin that they know they paid a penny for. The insurance company pays the hospital $5.00, and then they typically will ride into an employer group 
that has bought this insurance policy and they'll ride in on their white horse and say, we beat that hospital half to death and we discounted that $100 aspirin down to $5, we saved you $95. Typically in these contracts, the insurance company then shares in the savings that they've achieved. This is referred to in the industry as selling discounts or as claims repricing. So what the poor employer doesn't know is that this $5 payment was prearranged. What they also don't know is that the hospital has probably been asked by that insurance company to charge $200 for that aspirin because mm -hmm. they achieve an even greater discount and share in a greater amount of savings with the employer who is fleeced and has no idea about any of these shenanigans that are going on. So when you think through it, you realize, well, why is someone charged $100,000 for a total knee replacement when, when really the hospital knows all they're going to get is $30,000. Well, that $70,000 of red ink generates a kickback, helps, helps uh, maintain the fiction of their not-for-profit status, and the insurance company is going to charge someone to the extent that they discount these bills. Um, the other scam there's more? Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, it's real easy for people to take their eye off the ball. Um, I've been talking about this a lot lately because as disgusted as any listener right now would be with what I just said about the hospitals and the insurance companies, the real culprit in this entire mess is the federal government. And that is very important to remember because everything that we hate about healthcare, whether it's lack of price transparency, whether it's bad access, whether it's poor quality, high price, all of those things are the responsibility of federal interventions into the healthcare economy. And the idea that we would want to turn the whole thing over to the folks who caused these problems in the first place is illogical. So I'm trying very hard to make sure that as, as all of these scams that these cronies um, are involved in, these are simply favors that have been purchased or auctioned off actually in Washington, D.C. Uh, mm -hmm. to these companies. And the real culprit is the state, um, a, an entity that has no business being involved in healthcare at all, I don't believe. So, the other scam I talk about are the brokers, the insurance brokers. The insurance brokers many times will recommend that a, an insured buy a policy that is not necessarily the best uh, device and vehicle for that person or for that group, but rather <laughs> the policy they want to sell that generates the most giant undisclosed commissions to the broker or the brokerage house where he works. This is a huge problem in healthcare, and the brokers, the insurance brokers and the big brokerage houses are really the biggest problem in resistance to the free market movement in healthcare because as, as mm -hmm. prices become more transparent, then the big insurance carriers and the PPOs, they really don't have any role in the game yet they are the source huh. of these undisclosed commissions to the brokers. So the sales force with boots on the ground uh, from whom most employers derive all of their knowledge about healthcare is actually just a propaganda machine that is, that's really designed and geared toward maintaining the commissions that are paid to these brokerage houses that are never revealed to the employers who are the ostensible clients of these mm -hmm. brokerages. So those, those are some of the things that we've learned with the very simple, very simple uh, goal of, of putting our prices online. Mm -hmm. The action of putting prices online has made all of these things very clear. And the insurance companies want nothing to do with us. And we have very high quality, as you know, extremely high value. You would think an insurance company would be very compelled uh, to send everybody here, they could not want anything more opposite because 
with our prices being completely transparent, they have no opportunity to sell discounts or reprice the claims. Mm -hmm. So it, it all kind of comes together if you think a little bit through like the $100 aspirin story, that, that's the best way to explain the dysfunction of the healthcare system uh, that I can come up with. Mm -hmm. So I see Surgery Center of Oklahoma as, as a competitor with these scams, as you call them. And I also see cryptocurrencies as a competitor to what I see as the scam of the non-transparent fiat money, where, where all of this inflation is happening behind closed doors and there's no open ledger for anyone to examine to see what the real money creation has been. So I see these as, as parallel competing options. And I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, that you are part of a, a network of clinics or hospitals which, which are all seeking to compete in the same way, namely by, by posting prices. Tell me more about what you and your network are doing to compete with the scams. Yeah, this, this is an organization that I helped start with a friend named Jay Kempton called the Free Market Medical Association. Uh, okay. It's marketmedicine.org. And there's Can you a say the, the link again for me, Keith? Uh, it's marketmedicine.org. And the idea is for this association to bring the buyers and the sellers of healthcare together without intermediaries that foul the exchange. There are intermediaries involved in the exchange, but only ones who facilitate that exchange. So I think about it as like a match.com of healthcare where the buyer and the seller can find each other and prices are transparent. And the, the association has served as a resource to many people that are drawn uh, to the free markets uh, applicability in healthcare. And I, I have tried to help and have helped other facilities embrace the discipline of the market and, and walk down this path. So we, we don't want a franchise. We're not trying to get rich. We want everybody to copy us so that there will truly be a free market revolution in healthcare and there will actually be price and quality competition. And anywhere that competition is allowed, the same thing always happens. There's always a trend of falling prices and a trend of increasing in quality. And, and that's exactly what is happening in healthcare. And I think I'm very optimistic. I think that we're actually going to see a lot more of this. Um, and and it's, it's a great thing for the, the people who ultimately end up being patients, which is really all of us. That is, that is so true. So Keith, is it safe to say that if someone were to return to your clinic and ask to pay in a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, that you would once again accept the payment most convenient for them? Absolutely. Uh, pigs or chickens or cryptocurrency, <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with. And, and isn't it, after all, the duty of the vendor to provide and accommodate the the person who's paying with what, whatever, as long as the exchange is mutually beneficial, it, it's incumbent, I believe, on the seller to convenience the buyer, uh, particularly if there's any competition involved. I Going through that process of accepting the cryptocurrency uh, from you and Pete, it was, it, was, it was awesome. I mean, I learned a lot, and I think I went home and and uh, told my wife I felt younger than I did the day before because it was, <laughs> it was such a cool experience. Wow. Sponsored shout out from Limo Play, which is an online casino for bosses that want to use Bitcoin to play games like roulette, blackjack, slots, and hundreds of other casino games. Limo Play offers a generous welcome package just for signing up, and they pride themselves on their fast payouts. You can use Bitcoin to play any of their games, whether you're on desktop or mobile, by visiting limoplay.com. Good luck. Well, Keith, please, please tell us if someone is uh, more interested to learn about your surgery center, or if someone is just wondering, hey, what clinics can I go to? You know, maybe someone's looking to get a procedure or needs, needs some medical care of some kind that is better than perhaps what they have available where they live. How, was, how would someone embark upon this knowledge mission? 
a patient, a prospective patient could certainly start, and a good starting spot would be our website, you know, surgerycenterok.com. And from there, uh, they might look at the Free Market Medical Association, uh, with it, whether it's their website or on the on Facebook. They, we have a pretty good presence on Facebook. And that will give somebody a pretty good idea about what pricing should be, whether or not they are going to have to travel and how far uh, in order to get the care that they need. But uh, I, I foresee the Free Market Medical Association web side of like-minded individuals really exploding. There's so much momentum for these ideas. It, it's actually what I lie awake at night and worry about is, is how to accommodate the great number of people that are rushing to embrace the discipline of the free market. Wow. Well, allow me to say thank you for open sourcing your model. Uh, it, or to put it in those terms. That is how cryptocurrency and open source software in general works. It's people doing something and it proves successful and their model is published open source online. They don't say, oh, I'm going to sue you if you try to be successful like me. They, like you, say, here is what I did and I would benefit, I would profit by you doing the same, by also creating more wealth in society. And you are a wealth creator, Keith. So thank you very much. That's that's funny that you bring that up. We actually ran a, got a nasty letter from a company that decided to launch a website um, with the idea that they would sell uh, bundled pricing for surgeries. And they sent us a letter telling us that we had to cease and desist uh, or they'd be happy to sell us a license to continue what we've been doing for six years before they ever did this. We uh. have also been copied by University of California, Los Angeles, and a big hospital system in Pennsylvania. They have websites that have, are basically plagiarized versions of what I have online. And I think it's wonderful. I think imitation's the sincerest form of flattery. And I think it's wonderful. It, it's an indication of how much pressure that these big, uh, big, bad sort of Leviathan hospital systems are feeling from this market approach to price transparency. Right on, Keith. Well, Pete wanted me to tell you hi. So I am telling you hi now from him. And his bicep is plenty strong back in action. So thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Tell Pete hello. Thanks for having me on. I will. Bye, Keith. Bye-bye. Today's episode is brought to you by Node40, a hosting service for Dash's second tier of infrastructure. For a once monthly payment or a discounted payment for longer commitments, Node40 will take care of the hardware, configuration, and bandwidth required to run a Dash masternode. Reach out to their support staff to learn more at any time by visiting node40.com. I just want to say thanks to y'all for watching the Daily Decrypt. Hope you enjoyed yourself and have a good day. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I've got